Hello friends. So today in this video, we're gonna discuss the next two problems, or actually the C and D problem from the latest Code Forces round 719. So problem name is not addition matrix. It actually tells that like you are given n and you have to form a n cross n matrix such that you have to fill all the n square positions by different numbers such that a and b should not be adjacent. Our two numbers are adjacent if they have a difference of exactly one. So you do not want adjacent squares to be adjacent numbers. So you can you fill that into a proper thing uh, like proper configuration? If yes, then you have to print that configuration else the answer is minus one. Uh, I'll tell you with example. So uh, the question actually states that let's assume that we go for three. Okay, you have a three cross three grid and then you have to fill that three cross three grid with because there are nine positions. You have to fill the numbers from one till nine such that two numbers which are adjacent like adjacent means like one or two which has a difference of equal to one so one and two are adjacent numbers mm -hmm. two and three are adjacent numbers and so on this should not be side by side if they are side by side then that is not possible you have to somehow not place them side by side and that's the whole problem so the first thing which comes to my mind is okay just put them after one place block so the first number i can put is one then i do not put two here because then they would be side by side so i will put two here then I cannot put three here because if I put three here, then it will be like problem. Okay. So like I can put three or three here also, but to be uh, on a general case, let's put, put three here. Okay. Then uh, four here, five here, then again, six here, seven, eight, nine. And that is fine. So what I'm actually doing here is like, I am filling out like for the first row, just start filling out from the first position and then jump by two. So one, two. Then the second position just start filling from the second position like so it's like the even starting position is the zeroth column or the sec first column it's like zeroth column or the first column depending upon on which your row you are so it's like one two then three then again you go to four and five and then you have come when you have completed one pass then do the opposite thing then start from this position like uh six seven eight nine Okay, I'll tell you more with the uh, another example. So let's assume that we want to do for four. Sorry for my bad drawing. One, two, three, four. Okay, so do the same thing. Start from the first column, then just jump by two position is two. Then I cannot do jump by two position, so just go to the next column, next row. So for the next row, because in the first in the previous row I started from the zeroth column, then I start from the first column. So then it's three. Then jump to two position is four. Now I cannot do this, so I will go to the next column. But now, because I've started from the second column, like uh, zero column, first column, then again zero column. So five, then six, then seven, then eight. Now, because I've gone through the whole matrix and one pass is completed. So now again, go through the whole matrix again, but now fill up the rest places. So because in the first go, I started from the first column. Now in the second go, I start from the second column, like this zero first column. So like eight, then it is nine, 10, then again, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I hope you understand the logic part now. It's not too difficult to implement if you just uh, find out one pattern. And that's what we have done in the code part. You can also look in the code. Uh, no problem. Uh, you can just like write a code for this. Now the fourth problem is, the fourth problem is actually like, I just got messed up with one thing in the problem, like in the context itself. It actually states that you have to find out the number of pairs of the indices i and j such that this equation is fulfilled such so that you have to like you are given different integers and you have to find out how many pairs are there such that this condition is fulfilled which is a of j minus a of i is equal to j minus i so it's actually it actually means that the difference between two numbers is equal to their difference between the indexes but now the main thing in this problem is like you cannot do this in o of n square because uh, because of the constraints but what you can simply see in this problem is it's a of a if a of j minus a of i is equal to j minus i so you just take out this j to this point which is like a of j minus j is equal to a of i minus i and that's the whole trick for this problem nothing else so as you can see now the difference between a of j so as you can see you just have to find out the number of pairs in which the difference between the current element and its index are same i hope and i hope you get the point so it's actually saying that take out any number take out any number find or and actually do the subtraction of that number with its 
particular index okay so what we'll do we'll take out this example we'll iterate from left to right and subtract the current position from its index okay so that's what we're going to do subtract the current position with its index when we subtract that we will get different numbers so let's say for the first number i will get one second position i will get two then again one then three then two then one it actually tells that now i have subtracted the current number from its index i will get one so i have to find out pairs such that the subtraction of the current index minus the index both of them are same which means that i can form a pair of this two number i can form pairs of these of these three numbers so what i can do here is if i can form pair of these i can just if from three i have to put pick two so three c two okay so and then because they are same two two so then it's again uh, how many so we have to just store the frequency of them how many times one have occurred how many times two have occurred because all the ones i can form pair so if they are let's assume 100 ones i can find out two i have to choose two ones from those 100 ones how many times i can choose those such that i can form a pair and that's the whole answer you just have, you just have to add among all of them because you have to find out this condition should be holding true so uh, we can just use a map to store out that and that's then the problem become very simple what you can do here is you can just iterate over the whole numbers and just make a map of actual frequencies what at what time the current x is the current number minus the index you just make a map out of that like how many times each uh, particular value which is like a of i minus i how many time a particular this value occurs okay that's the frequency for that particular value just add them in a map and then total the total number of pairs you can form just iterate from left to right over the map because maps store the different frequencies and let's assume that i have uh, 3c2 or let's assume that i have n numbers of some kind and i have to choose two so it's like n into n minus one divided by two there's a number of pairs i can form okay so that's what we're gonna do then the total is over all the different numbers i have seen which are stored in map i dot second is a frequency so i dot second into i dot second minus one which is like i dot second is actually n so n into n minus one divided by two and just add all the values and that's the answer i hope you understand the logic and the code for another two problems stay tuned for more videos i'll see you next one till then keep coding and bye